Oh, for f sake. <laughs> ah, shit. What happens if you allow the workers in your company to talk? They might use it to convey important information. But what if they're controlled by an idiot? Let me show you. We have our workers. Check. We have an idiot to control them. Check. Can they talk? No. This is the wrong level. Well, let me put another check on the idiot part. There. This is the correct level. Our assignment here seems pretty simple. We just need to label those cubes from left to right, starting with 1, then 2, and so on. Now there is a countermeasure in place to prevent us from cheating. Again, I don't trust this manager, because she's a robot after all. So let me try picking up a cube that is assigned to a different worker. So this lady should pick up this cube, which belongs to this gentleman. Let's see. <laughs> well, they all blew up. Marvelous. Now let's try again. And perhaps this time don't pick up these cubes like that. I've got two ideas. The first idea would be to assign each of these commands that the people can tell a number. So if someone hears hi, that means they're supposed to write one or perhaps two. How many do we have? We have 10 cubes and we only have eight commands. So that probably wouldn't work, but we could say that the person on the right that doesn't have a worker here writes 10 this person writes one and then we can just work our way from there so we're gonna have just eight people writing numbers and we have eight commands so that would be one option the other option would be to start from left and perhaps write as well to optimize for time those people would write their numbers tell the person next to them that they are ready that the number has been written and the person is simply gonna read that number and write one higher or if we are going from the right side, one lower. Let's try that. So if to the left of you there isn't a worker, you're this person. Oh, everyone pick up your cubes, I forgot. And this person is supposed to write number one. And at the end, they all drop the cubes anyway. So write number one and tell the person to the right of you, hi, whatever. And if uh, you're not the first person in line, you're supposed to be listening for that hi. And now I want this person to read the number one. We could say calculate the data cube that's next to you plus one. And I think this might work for the first person as well, because the number to the left of her is nothing. So I think that's a zero. So can we reverse this? Let's say if to the left of you there is a worker, you're going to be listening. Otherwise, you write and tell. No, 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 not like that. You listen. And the first person is not listening. That's it. So calculate what you're supposed to write. Write it, drop the cue and tell hi to the right. That means this person waiting here is going to get triggered Calculate number two, presumably. Write it, drop it, tell. That should work. Let's see. It's gonna work from the left side. So, yes, zero plus one is one. Great. Drop it. Say hi. And he's gonna... Yeah, nice. That's gonna work beautifully. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, all the way to ten. That's it. I was hoping we would nail the optional challenge straight away. But we are one command over. Now, my thinking was that we could speed this up by going from the right side as well. We were on 50 seconds and this should cut it in half. So 25, hopefully. We'll see. But how can we remove a single command here? Can we? Do we have to drop the cubes? All cubes must be placed back on the floor. Okay, never mind. We have to drop the cubes. Do we have to step down? We don't have to step down, nugget. So just pick up the cubes which means that they should step down anyway, right? Okay, no, it doesn't. And we need them to drop the cubes on this line. So we need that step there anyway. So this is not gonna work. Yep, exactly. So we do need this step down. Is there a way around that? I don't think there is. There's no way. You, you have to pick up and step. That's a given. You're gonna have to write and drop. That's basically the assignment. And I feel like this is the most efficient way of doing this. 
Wow, that's a tough one. So let's go for the speed challenge instead. So I wanted to do this, but from both sides. I would ideally like to say listen for high or some other thing. And if you hear like coffee time from the right side, it means you're supposed to be looking right. And if you hear high, you're supposed to be looking left. But we can do that. They can look both ways, but they wouldn't know which number is the correct one. So I think the rightmost person can actually save this all calculating stuff. So let's get that out of the way. So if to the right of you there isn't a worker, you just write a 10, drop the cube and end your program. The remaining people are still going to be listening and calculating. But we could also say that if to the left of you there isn't a worker, you can simply write a one that's going to be faster than calculating and put all this inside of the if statement for the other workers. So this should already be faster. Does it work though? 10, 1, high and yeah, so on. Yeah, two seconds faster. Okay, great. <laughs> that was a waste. Now I wanted to try the thing that I've been talking about previously by listening to high and when you hear high it means you write a two when you listen for morning you write a three and so on but again that wouldn't work at all or would it how fast is the writing right that's pretty fast so still better than calculating well you can already see i'm getting quite desperate here <laughs> so basically one person goes through all the cubes and just you know writes the numbers that's it does it work? Is it faster? It should work, come on. So everyone stops. This lady just... Oh, for fuck's sake. I forgot that she can't touch the cubes of another people. Oh, I'm, I'm an idiot. Okay, so this was a huge waste of time. <laughs> I can't believe it. So I'm back looking at this code. That worked. It's basically the first one I made, but with the optimization that the right person writes 10 immediately, we want the first person to start writing as soon as possible. So perhaps this if statement, well, first of all, let's see how fast this is, because I have forgotten already. 44 seconds. I thought it used to be 48. Never mind. Anyway, this person, number 10, could go in the else branch here. So number one starts writing already, number two starts listening, and only after that number 10 can start writing, because there's a long way to go. So is this faster? It's gonna be like one if statement faster, so they don't have to check this. So maybe a second? Okay, never mind. Five seconds slower. <laughs> Wait, are you serious? Oh, because this doesn't work, because number 10 actually has a worker to the left, so she's listening for high. So hang on, let me say... <laughs> and um, to the right of you there is also a worker. There. <laughs> so this, this should now work the way I wanted it. Yeah already written number 10. Still 44. Yeah, basically we've shaved off one if statement of time. So that's not even a second. And the other part was first tell high and then you drop. So we're not wasting the dropping time and we can already tell someone to start working. So is this faster? Yes, it is. So three seconds faster, it seems. This is not the way to make this faster. I think I need another idea. What if I didn't tell them to step here, instead they would step before dropping? No listening, no nothing. Number one writes, number ten writes, and this still works the same. And then if there is a worker to the left and right of you, meaning you're somewhere in the middle, you're gonna be watching the adjacent tiles which are left down and write down of you. So if you see a data cube to the bottom down from you, you're gonna calculate that data cube plus one and write it. How do I write? Oh, here it is. And write it 
on your data queue and then again step down drop if you see a data queue to the bottom right you do the same but you calculate bottom right plus oh sorry minus one this time there and again write it so we can actually put this here and let's say that if oh we can put this here actually all the way down there we're gonna need a jump a few jumps so keep doing that forever and if you have found a data cube of such sort you jump out of the loop and this hopefully should mean this should do what I wanted originally that we propagate the information from both sides at once let's see if this works right 1 10 drop down why the what the shit did you do why did they write zero oh because of this bullshit <laughs> Ah, shit. I don't think that setting a value to a memory takes any time in this game. So, eventually they write memory 1, which wasn't initialized in their case, so they wrote 0. And what we can do is, instead of writing 1, just initialize the variable memory 1. So set to 1 and set to 10 instead of writing and then they are gonna write it anyway. If we wanted more optimization we could place jumps here and here to again skip this if statement. Hopefully not necessary. Let's see. So you write 1, 10 and these guys are watching and calculating 2, 9. Great, working perfectly. And that's 4, 6, 5, 6. Let's see. Yes, nice! 20 seconds! That's what I'm talking about. Now just to be perfectly complete and sure that this does only change one if statement, let me put those jumps in after all, and this should be not even a second faster. 19 seconds, yeah, okay, a second. This looks pretty shit, to be honest. But it works, and that's the most important thing in this game. Now I'm going to copy this code and hopefully attempt to shave off one command again. What if I tell them to keep writing? Will that work? She writes a zero. Um, well, she's already written a one because I messed up and they're no longer holding the cubes. That was just, you know, a dumb idea, whatever. Oh, she's, she was meant to write one. <laughs> I forgot, <laughs> I thought she, she was supposed to write zero. <laughs> I could have them write random numbers, but we only have, I think it's about five minutes. I think it was maybe 500 seconds. So like eight and a half minutes maybe. And I don't think we would be able to get those 10 numbers perfectly aligned in a row 25 times within those eight minutes. Okay, that's not the way. And I wouldn't really want to keep trying until the universe ends. Eventually it might happen. It would, probably. Oh, I know. This is gonna help. This is some good old-fashioned compiler optimization. Now the code should be faster. Let's see. Keep writing those numbers, but be fast. <laughs> nice. Oh, sorry, I'm an idiot again. <laughs> I'm supposed to shave off commands, not make it faster. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. All right, thought about it and I came up with absolutely nothing. I have no idea. Let me know how to shave off one command from this code. Or is this approach totally flawed?